Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and TVOS 18 released to the public and is available around the world at the same time for everyone. TVOS 18 includes some new features, changes, and updates that make using it a little bit better overall. So I thought we'd go over all the new features and changes, and these will work on any supported device, which means an Apple TV HD from 2015, Apple TV 4K from 2017, Apple TV 4K second generation from 2021, or Apple TV 4K third generation from 2022. Now let's go ahead and talk about what's new. Now in the interface itself, we have some updates. If we go down to settings, We'll go into settings, go to general, then go to appearance. Not only do we have light and dark mode and automatic, but now we have display zoom where we can make larger icons on the home screen. This actually gives us five icons across instead of six. So if you want to leave it like this, you can actually just leave this or use whatever you prefer. We also have some new screen savers that Apple's adding. Of course, you'll see some new ones as they sort of cycle through over time, they'll download to your device and you'll start to see them. So you'll be able to view these new screen savers. And there's some new options here that Apple's adding for TV and movies, as well as Snoopy. Eventually we haven't seen any of those in the earlier betas either, but they should be coming eventually. We also have options for some different looks with our portraits or photos. If we go into screen saver, Within screensaver, you'll see current selection and in here you'll see aerials, memories and slideshows where mine are still syncing and then portraits as well. Portraits can have a clock over them with some time that sort of integrates into the screensaver itself. And if you want to select from those and different options, you can see those in your screensaver options. You have portraits and then you can select from things such as people, pets, nature, cities, and how often you want to change it. So if you want to show all, you can select all favorites or just hide them all together. So it's up to you what you want to show on here, but that's something they've added. Another thing they've added has to do with the TV app. If we go into the TV app itself, and then we go down to maybe let's go over into one of my movies here. So we'll go into my library within my library. If maybe we go to this one back to the future, press and hold, you'll now see play and then go to movie. You can play it directly from here just by pressing and holding on the controller or go to movie where you see all of the information and the option to resume, see what's up next. And then different information such as related your extras, how to watch and so on. If we go back, maybe continue to go back and go into sports, we'll have live previews of sports now. So if there's something going on, you can see a live preview of that. And additionally, if we're playing a movie or TV show that supports it, so let's go maybe into Apple TV plus as those seem to be some of the latest that support it. If you're in a TV show that supports it, we'll have more information about that episode. So if we pause this, go down, you'll see insight. Insight is very similar to what we have with Amazon, where it gives more information about the actors in the scene. And as we scroll over, you'll see all of the different actors. And maybe if a song is playing, you'll see it here as well. Press on the song and you can add it automatically to your library and that's in your Apple music library. So you'll see it there later and you can actually see that by going into music. So if we go into music and then we go to our playlists, so we go to our library here, then go down to our playlist. You'll see it right away for Ted Lasso and you'll see it in the playlist called saved songs as well. So these are saved from different TV shows. So you can get all of that directly from the TV app, but there's even more than that. Not only do we have our insights, but we also have updates to enhance dialogue. We now have enhanced dialogue where we can bring the dialogue to the forefront. We can enhance it or just boost it all together so we can hear it over the background noise. And if we do enable this, we can also reduce loud sounds. So we have the option to sort of bring that to the forefront. If we don't want it to be super loud, maybe it's at night and you want it quiet in your house or apartment, you can then turn that on. We also have some big updates to subtitles. We now have an auto mode and what this does is it will actually show up automatically if someone is speaking in a language that's not added as your preferred language. And there's some options for that as well. But if you mute your Apple TV, maybe you're watching something, but you still want to continue watching it. If you mute, it will automatically show subtitles. Or if you jump back in a scene, it will show you those subtitles so that you don't miss what was said. 
If we go back to settings, if we go into settings and then go to video and audio, we have our options down here for not only enhanced dialogue, but reduce loud sounds. And we also have options for our language, like I mentioned before. So we have the option to show for different languages. If you want it to sort of pop up and show subtitles, and then you can add subtitle language to be different than what you actually have. So all of those new enhancements can be turned off if you want, but they're on by default. Also to go along with this airplay now adds spatial audio. So users can get sort of an immersive audio experience when you're using Dolby Atmos with airplay to stream audio from your iPhone or iPad to a compatible device. So that's something that they'll carry across now. And we have some updates for FaceTime. One of the updates has to do with when we're maybe using FaceTime with a remote camera. We can now set the camera as a dedicated camera. So maybe you want to use an iPhone all of the time, or you have a third party camera plugged in. You can then say, this is the camera I want to use all the time when you're using FaceTime. And if you're in a FaceTime call, it actually now supports live captions. So if you're using FaceTime, you can use that with live captions. Now, if you want that to show up on the screen. In addition to that, we now have share play in Apple music. So maybe you're playing a song from here. Let's go ahead and press play, go ahead and press play on that song. As long as you're connected to different speakers, you'll see the song here now has the option for share play at the bottom, press share play, and they can connect via QR code, or you can bring your device nearby and it will connect. The good thing is they don't need an Apple TV subscription. Only the main user needs that subscription. Then you can control what's on your screen and then start listening to music based on whatever you select. If we go back into settings within settings, if we go over into our accessibility settings, we have a new option this year for voice isolation. So if we go down to add voice isolation, we can enable this and it says adds isolate as an additional option to enhance dialogue. When used dialogue is completely isolated for people who need maximum clarity. So this is a new option if you want to enable it. In addition to this, we have Siri on the device. So we had Siri to search other things, but now we can actually use Siri for maybe searching for the weather. What's the weather today? You'll see it gives the weather. So we have additional information with sports scores. What was the last Charlotte Panthers score? And you'll see football, and then we can see what the last score was depending on where you live, of course. So it may not always get it right, but at least we have Siri on here. If we go back to home and then we go to fitness, there's an update here. Once connected in fitness, just like on iOS 18, we have a new for you section where you can explore, go to your library and see a stack of information here. So if you have for you enabled, if you're working out regularly using this, you can build a custom plan and it will give suggestions based on how you've been working out. So they've updated the interface to make it a little bit easier to go through and to give those suggestions with it. We also have an update for gaming. Gaming gets an update where you have personalized spatial audio for gaming with AirPods. That's something they added with iOS 18 as well with reduced latency. So if you want to use the personalized spatial audio option for your AirPods Pro 2, you can then use those and they're actually quite good when they're connected. You have great spatial audio as long as the game supports it. Unfortunately, that's mostly just Apple Arcade right now. As long as your game supports it, you'll be able to use that. So if we go down here and you have one that supports spatial audio, hopefully we'll see more in the future. The last update to TVOS 18 has to do with projectors. You can now use a projector with a 21, nine aspect ratio. It will be supported in video and audio if you've actually got it connected. So some nice little updates. The best things are probably the subtitle updates and then additions with insight, but those are the updates to Apple TV with TVOS. We're expecting maybe we'll get an update to the TV box itself. We don't really know when that's going to happen, but hopefully we'll see that very soon. Now, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.